Good morning, friends. It is Wednesday, the 21st of July, um, and we are on mile 18 today, which is read 2 Timothy 4. It says, memorize verse 7. Think about people you know who have already finished the race. How can their example strengthen you? We'll come back to that in just a minute. But first, friends, let's pray. Oh, dear Lord, we're so thankful for this study. Lord, that we get to spend time in your word, that we get to better understand who you are and your will and your call on our lives. Lord, bless this time that we may glean something that we have never uh, we have never picked up before, Lord, something that we've never thought about in these holy words, in this holy scripture. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, friends, so uh, like I said, mile 18, 2 Timothy 4. Let's jump right in, right? So this is the, the, the conclusion to the second letter written to Timothy. Um, but it's kind of funny, whenever you get to the end, a few verses, it almost seems like um, like this was written to more than Timothy. Um, so I'm assuming that this is like the ministry team, right, that, that's with Timothy. So, you know, Timothy is like, the lead guy, but he has all these people with him. Um, and there, there's some fun, catchy lines in here uh, that that I want to that I want to hit on here in just a moment. But he starts off. Paul starts off by writing, "In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in the view of appearing and His kingdom." And this is what I have highlighted here. I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message. Be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. So what does that tell me? Yeah, that tells me that Paul doesn't have a one-and-done kind of mentality, right? Um, so Paul tells us, right, we got to keep being persistent. Um, if it doesn't work the first time, all right, let's try something else, right? You, you all know that my background um, is in education, right? And, and to reach the kids, sometimes that's what we have to do as teachers, right? One way that we present the material, they may not get, but if we give another illustration, another example, right, um, then maybe they pick up on the material or on the content. And, you know, you, it, there, there's nothing better as an educator than to see that light bulb moment whenever you realize that they finally understand what you're talking about, you know, and um, what, you're, what you're trying to teach them, right? But Paul says that's what we have to do, right, in our walk and in our, in our mission, right, to help people understand who Christ is, right, to proclaim the message. We have to be persistent, whether the time is favorable or not. So if you're like me, you look for an opportune time to do whatever it is you're trying to do. Right, um, I will stand off in the distance and observe and wait for the opportune time to go and say something to someone. Right, maybe they're in a conversation, I don't want to interrupt. Right, you kind of stand off in the background. Right, or we wait until maybe we work up the courage or until our heart is ready to share with someone. Right, and that's all well and good. But we have to remember that sometimes we find ourselves in situations that we find unacceptable, right? And in that, we still have to proclaim and live the gospel of Jesus Christ each and every day, whether the scenario is good or the scenario is bad, right? That's what Paul is telling us here, right? Be persistent in claiming the message, whether it's favorable or unfavorable. It says, convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. Patience, right? Um, I don't know if you've ever heard this, um, this saying, but um, you know, one thing that you never pray for is patience, right? Why is that? Because if you pray for patience, right, God's going to give you many challenges to show you how to be patient. Right, it's not just a light bulb. God's gonna be like, oh, all of a sudden you're patient and you don't mind, you know, waiting in traffic or whatever. Right, God's gonna give you those instances and those times to 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 explore and to find out how to be patient. Right, um, I, I like to think that God likes to give us these challenges. Right, 
to see our fruitfulness, to see how we respond, right? And, and right, you never pray for patience, but uh, this is patience and teaching, right? You have to have patience in teaching. We don't always see the, the desired results right away. Um, you know, once again, being education, uh, um, in Christian education specifically, you know, and th this kind of echoes the role as a pastor as well. Um, although the congregations are in different places than, than what my students were, obviously. But um, I don't always see the fruits of our labors. Um, we plant the seed, right? We plant the seed, and um, we hope that that seed eventually sprouts and grows. Sometimes we do see it, you know, happen in front of our eyes. And it's amazing and it's glorious. Sometimes it doesn't happen in front of our eyes. You know, I, I've had students that came back, you know, three, four, five years after graduation and said, you know, what you taught us here, and this, don't think this is me trying to be, to be egotistical or anything, right? But to say, what you have taught us here has really prepared us for life and has really shown us who God is to be in our lives, right? And that's the objective, right? But we don't always get to see that, right? We plant the seeds, we can water the seeds, but we hope that they grow, right? But there's no guarantee that those seeds are gonna grow. But you have to be patient in teaching, right? You have to wait for that seed to grow, right? We talked, talked I think it was yesterday, about reaping and sowing, right? You know, that principle of reaping and sowing. You have to be patient to wait to be able to reap what you sow, right? It doesn't, our gardens don't just sprout up overnight. You know, if you're like me right now, I have an overabundance of zucchini, right? Th those didn't just come up overnight, right? Start off as little teeny tiny plants, and then all of a sudden, right, they bloom and they blossom, and, and there's just this abundance that comes. Anyways, so let's move on. Um, We'll jump down to verse 5. It says, As for you, always be, so always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. Right? And this doesn't just apply to us pastors. Right? This is all of you. This is for all followers of Christ. Right? Always be sober, endure suffering. And maybe the most important here, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully commit to something commit to some way of making sure that you're sharing the gospel you're sharing the good news of jesus christ to all people everywhere that we go some way to do that commit yourselves to that hey if you get nothing else out of this month out of this this running the race thing that we're doing in july right this study do that for me commit to yourselves to show somebody somehow who Christ is and how he's impacted your life. All right, that's the greatest gift that we can give anybody is to show them the light, to show them Jesus Christ and the blessings that he has bestowed upon our lives. Uh, so it says memorize verse 7, right? Um, you know, I think I've had this conversation with many people that I'm not a good memorizer. Um, I just... My brain, for some reason, just doesn't just doesn't like to memorize. Um, verse seven, right, is one that um, I I paraphrased a lot, so I might not know the exact wording as it's written in the in the NRSV version that I have sitting here in front of me. Um, but but you know these are words that I think that we've heard so many times that we can at least paraphrase them, right? Um, it, it, verse seven says something along the lines of "I have fought the good fight," right? I have I finished the race. I've kept the faith. Right? I fought the good fight. I did what I could. Right? Paul's saying, I did what I could. You know, this almost seems like that Paul is on his deathbed when he's writing this. I don't know if he is. Um, I don't know if, you know, the imprisonment has finally got to him and he's like, you know, I don't know, I'm towards the end here. But, you know, I fought the good fight. Sounds like something that somebody would say at the end of their life, right? <laughs> yeah, I gave it all that I did. But the question is, can you say that? Can you honestly say that, like Paul said it? That I have fought the good fight. That I have finished the race. That I have done what God has called me to do. But I think that's a double-edged sword. Because I don't think that our work for God is ever done here. 
I think as long as we're still on this earth, God has a purpose for us here, has something for us to advance his kingdom. Okay? That's why we're still here, because he needs us here to do that. Right? That's why, um, if you remember back the very first Sunday in July, I said, I don't know that this race is actually going to be over at the end of the month, right? We keep running the race. The race doesn't end, right? But Paul, I think, is reconciling here the work that he's done, right? By saying that I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I have kept the faith. Like, what else do I need to do? And this might just, this might be a lament as well, right? As to him sitting in prison and, and lamenting about his life. And, oh, man, why am I in prison? Why is this happening to me? You know, my ministry is it's fruitful, but yet I'm still stuck in chains. I'm still in bondage but friends friends you know that we're not because of that sacrifice because of Jesus blood that's poured out for you and for me friends that's the promise that's the hope right and that's what we share that's what we share Right? Whenever I talk about making sure that we're going out and, and talking to people and showing them Jesus, right? We can tell them in words, yes, but we show them by our actions. We show them by our love. They'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, right? As the hymn goes, um, one of my favorites. So friends, let's do that. Let's show them that we are Christians by our love. Let's keep running the race. And friends, I will see you tomorrow, Thursday. Don't forget, tomorrow night um, at 6 o'clock, our Zoom session. I'll make sure I send out the email link for that as well. So friends, be blessed. Have a great Wednesday, and I'll see you all tomorrow.